welcome to another video and behind me you can see the Mercedes A45 AMG. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, there's a couple of videos of where I collected the car and revealed it and also a first drive and I'll leave a couple of cards up here throughout the video. But today's video is more about the exterior and interior overview. I'll give you a bit of revs, so let's get on with it and let's see what this is all about. Okay, so I think we'll start with the, uh, let's start with the front of the car and we'll start with the big Mercedes Badger in the middle. Now, some of these models have uh, an optional extra available to them, which is called Distronic, uh, which effectively is your variable cruise control. So, uh, and that's kind of been built here into the star. My one doesn't have it, but it does have the anti-collision uh, detection thingy magic. Um, you can see here, you've got the twin blade, which will be the last, um, I think this, this version is the last car that's gonna have the twin blade, because I think the newer versions of the cars are gonna have you'll see kind of like vertical stripe. You've seen it with the new C63 that's just been released. And I believe that the new, uh, the new A45 when it comes will also have something similar. Um, looking over at the lights. So uh, you can see really nice lights. You've got LED lights. So you've got really nice LED daytime running lights. Um, and the cool thing with this actually, when you start this up, you won't see it during the day, but when you unlock the car at night, these actually start out blue which is a really nice touch. Um, the lights on these are ridiculous as well. They are so bright. As part of the aero kit, you get these really nice kind of canard things here. So uh, I think with the A45, you, like I said, you have to have uh, the aero kit on it because it just makes it look so much better. So you've got these, this canard here, and obviously this one here, which kind of pulls all the way around here and you can see where it ends there. Um, this being a facelift model, it's got a slightly different front bumper. So um, it's a little more rounded, whereas the pre-facelift version um, is a little bit more square looking. I think for me, the front of the facelift looks a lot more aggressive in my opinion. Um, and as you can see down here, lots of air intake locations. Ooh. You can see there, I think they're radiators, etc. but you know, lots of air being sucked in here into the engine bay. Got front parking sensors uh, and also more air ducts in there. So more radiator and uh, all about this side. Uh, no, there's nothing on this side. So yeah, so front of the car is, uh, it looks really, really nice. And this is in Juniper, uh, Jupiter Red, uh, which for me is a really, really nice color. If we come and take a side look here at the, uh, at the wheels. So we've got massive, massive six pot AMG brakes um, with the black wheels. These are kind of black matte wheels with kind of the chrome surround here, which for me, I'm not the greatest fan of the chrome element, if I'm honest with you. Um, but you know, for what it is at the moment, it will do. Uh, these are 19 inch wheels. And on this right now, I'm running the Pirelli tires, which are run flats, which generally I'm not a fan of run flats, but they seem to be okay on this car. Uh, one of the optional extras, ironically, I didn't even realize this is these, these mud guards. You have to, you know, it's an additional optional extra you get. Um, and normally I'm not a fan, but actually what I found is it stops all the spray going up the side of the car, which is always a painful thing, particularly where I live. Now we take a look at the rear of the car, which this for me is the best angle of this car. In fact, now if you're looking at the car this here is the angle right there it just looks so aggressive so on this one being the face so the face version you get different rear lights uh, so the lights on the rear are slightly different um, i've removed the plates around because i had this uh, horrible looking uh, plates around with uh, mercedes-benz of south wales on it although it's still there but it didn't look very very nice you get uh, these quite nice gloss black accents over the uh, rear vent things here, which I'm assuming is to let out air. In fact, no, there's nothing in there. That's purely, purely a cosmetic look. Uh, but one of the things you get on the facelift is this rear diffuser. Now, apologies, the car isn't the cleanest today, but um, I can't keep it clean all the time. But you get the um, the rear diffuser. Now, um, on the pre-facelift cars, you didn't have this kind of really aggressive looking rear diffuser. Uh, whereas on the facelift from 2016 onwards, you do get uh, this diffuser and I really like it a nice bit of aero you can see here that there's kind of slats I don't know can you see yeah you've got slats in here which allow for the air to be kind of drawn in from underneath and pull out the car you've got the performance exhaust on this car so one of the things that I do like about it is the noise and um, this car has the performance exhaust one of the things that if you're looking for um, the A45 the difference really between the performance exhaust and the normal exhaust is really and truly just one resonator 
So the normal exhaust has two resonators in it. This just has the one and uh, it does sound really, really good out the box. But um, yeah, so the back of the car with that rear diffuser does look rather, rather nice. I really do like it. If I was to take a look at the boot space. Oh. So yeah, boot space is is pretty pretty good to be fair. I mean, look at that. That's a huge boot in comparison. Um, you get a lot of space. You get some nice little holders here as well, which if you know you don't want things to be loose about losing about. Uh, if losing about is that even a word. If you don't want things to be loose, you can put them in here. Uh, you also get uh, the ability to fold these seats down. So actually, when you fold the seats down, in comparison, you've got you've got a huge boot, and you also get an additional kind of netting netting thing here which is quite nice as well so loads of storage in this car absolutely loads of it obviously the other thing that comes as part of the um aero kit is of course the wing at the top here um it's kind of plastic wing so it looks really nice it gives you that asbo look to it uh, and i think the black with the red which contrasts really really well so if we start to take a look at the inside let's start with the back so space in the back is is good the space is actually pretty good if i'm honest with you so you've got a very very nice leather and alcantara seat pack here uh, so this specific car is the premium version um, which means i think you do get the alcantara and the leather I'm not 100 percent sure i'm going to run through the spec sheet in a bit but you get very nice red uh, red red seat belts which match the red stitching that you can see over here so really nice red and black combo uh space between the driver's seat and i sit really really far back as well so um, actually there's quite a bit of space you can easily fit people in the back of this and uh, and yeah happy days you can see the kind of point of view from the back person's seat here um again really nice you've got the sunroof on this which is fantastic nice big panoramic sunroof which goes all the way back as well and then you've got a Harman Kardon speakers in the doors there and also more stitching along the side here. So really nice place to be here in the back. If we take a look at the front, so obviously as part of this, you've got the memory seats. So you've got adjustable seats, pretty much every single part of the seat is adjustable and you've got three memory modes as well. So you can store depending on whether it's you, your missus or, you know, whatever it may be, who's driving. You've got the ability to store different kinds of memory, which I think is a really nice touch, particularly as this seat has so many options and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, what you usually, your usual stuff, obviously windows, locking the windows, electric mirrors, etc., and more red stitching. Um, AMG, I don't know if you can see it, but the AMG logo is illuminated in white. So this is another nice touch. I think this is part of the lighting pack. I'm not 100% certain. Big, big pedals. But the other part here, when I talk about the seats, so, I mean, take a look at these seats. These seats look incredible, but more importantly, they are so comfortable, it's unbelievable. And you've got so many different things you can do with it. So you can adjust left and right here. So literally these parts here, these kind of bolsters by the legs. So one of these makes this tighter so you can kind of fold it in and out. You've got this one here, which makes these bolsters even tighter as well. So you can really, really hug yourself in this car. And also down here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, uh, you also have kind of like a lumbar support. So depending on where you want it, you can raise it up, down, left or right, and that will give you the lumbar that you need. So it will either go up, down, pull it up, forward and back. So you can literally adjust this seat to however you want. This is the steering wheel. Um, it's a half leather, half Alcantara steering wheel with a nice little red bit of leather up there. Uh, very multifunctional steering wheel. You can do a whole other load of stuff with this car, which with the steering wheel, sorry, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in a moment. Um, paddle shifts, very nice, very nice click to them as well, if you have a listen. So you've got up paddles, down paddles as well. Um, classic AMG emblem here, which is really, really nice. Um, if you take a look at the, uh, the dash, so you've got the iconic Mercedes kind of the rev, uh, sorry, the dials go all the way up and down. You've got a rev counter on the right, again, temperature there on the right. Uh, in the middle, you've got the kind of onboard computer. Now, depending on what you do, it all depends. So at the moment, I've got it set to um, AMG mode so I can see the temperatures, um, but you've got a bucket list of options here. So you can just kind of flick right, left, so you can do your trip, which kind of tells you your mile an hour, your range, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also move over to your nav. Uh, so when your, nav when your navigation is active at the moment, I haven't turned it on. When your navigation is active, you'll, you'll get your directions there. You also have obviously control of the audio here. You have your phone and you've got assistance here as well. So collision prevention, you can turn that all on and off, etc. You can see how far you are away from your service interval and uh, loads more stuff, for example, with regards to the stuff you can do with a car. 
Well, I normally tend to have it set on AMG up until the point when the car is warm and then I leave it kind of on um, on my speed here, which is a little frustrating because um, the kilometer, and I still haven't figured out how you change the kilometers up here because I'm going on a road trip pretty soon and I'd like to see kilometers up there. So I'm not entirely sure how you do that yet. So uh, we'll have to figure that one out. Automatic wipers, all that usual jazz. And down here, you can probably see you've got the, um, the cruise control. So there you can see you've got a uh, cruise control here so you can control speed uh, up and down. You can put an uh, electronic limiter in as well. So if you are going somewhere, you don't want to break the speed limit. You've got the option to do that there. And taking a look further down here at the dash, uh, the cabin, so center console, two cup holders here. One right now is my uh, my lovely California Sense, uh, which does is amazing, by the way. The cherry flavor is the best one. But, you know, two reasonably sized cup holders here. Inside here, you've got ample storage. Uh, on this one, I've got the two ports, um, which... Uh, on the left you can charge your iPhone, on the right is allegedly the smartphone integration, but that's that's a bit of a myth um, And I'll talk to you guys about that in a moment because you can get Apple CarPlay on this car um, But uh, you need this smartphone integration option there, but for some reason I don't have Apple CarPlay yet on this and that's I think it's because uh, One this isn't the command system. This is what they call audio 20 and two you need to I think activate it So I'm still doing a bit of research as to how how that works, but Storage in here again, you know plenty of space to put whatever it is you want to put in here, which is great nice armrest which slides forward and back uh, We look down here at the gearbox or the box itself. So you've got a um, It depends on what you go for so as I said in my first videos this car specifically doesn't have uh, the adaptive suspension uh, and if you take a look at the adaptive suspension button here it's normally like a little coil over and effectively what that is is with the adaptive pack it's called the driver's pack uh, i believe you get the uh the diff uh you also get the adaptive suspension obviously but you also get a race mode which you can activate from down here uh this here now doesn't have it but really i don't feel that i need it from what i came from but a lot of people say it's a must so you've got i for individual mode comfort mode which is for your everyday driving it gives you the best economic economy then you've got sport and sport plus and sport plus is really where the car becomes alive you get all the crackles and pops uh, on the upshifts and the downshifts you've got the ability to go completely manual as well which is fantastic so you can just drive it straight off of the pill uh, off the paddles uh parking obviously drive etc a very nice mercedes amg gear knob leather uh, you can see the f alta back uh, logo there the amg logo uh, which does it nice really really nice feel to it uh again another little kind of storage department in here so you've got your 12 volt if you really want to kind of connect that up and connect your phone up here if you don't have one of these uh because again that's not an that's an option you have to spec in uh, so you can still charge your phone as you would normally do for a 12 volt there you go so then you've got the, the climate control here uh, again very very self-explanatory very very nice you've got individual controls for left and right and you've got your different mode settings here as well Looking at here the head unit, so the head unit still looks a little bit um, a little bit old school if I'm honest with you, like the whole, you know, like a phone keypad thing. Uh, but depending on which one you go for, so you've got the option to go for command, which is a lot more of an op a more expensive option. But what command gives you is the more adult looking maps, which at the moment on my one here, uh, it doesn't really, it doesn't show you exactly uh, too much info but it, it works i mean for what it is it works it's the garmin maps uh, but the command is a lot more adult looking but again if i have the apple carplay connected and running i would probably be using google maps so i still need to figure out how to get that done you have down here once we get some focus you've got uh, heated seats on both sides you've got the traction control button so sport on sport off your hazard lights your start stop um which is quite cool though. so the start side on this car a lot of people say you just instantly turn it off and i've, and I've got kind of used to uh, leaving it on just for my commute to work and you also have this mode called sailing mode and once the temperatures are up which uh, when you eventually go back to the amg element here you'll see that you've got you know you've got your oil your water and your gearbox that's the big one so when they're all out of the blue and they're all in the warm then you have the the start stop is available and all that jazz um 
The other thing as well for this car is the launch control. So you have launch control on this car and the sequence to, to, to get launch control active is, it's like a, a lunar landing. It's ridiculous and I'll explain that in another video. Uh, but effectively, the only way you're gonna be able to do launch control is everything has to be white, uh, but the gearbox temperature I believe has to be 70 degrees Celsius in order to take the abuse it's gonna get from when you do a launch control. You've got the uh, very nice vents. So a lot of people don't really like these, but I really do. I think they look really nice. You've got the red and black vents. They kind of look like little turbine wheels here, three of them. Uh, you've got the carbon carbon dash as well, which is really nice. The screen itself, you have the, uh, it's like an iPod, iPad looking thing. Uh, so you do have loads and loads of options with, the, with this thing. Yeah, so you've got, you've got nav, you've got your radio, you've got media. Uh, and with the media, depending on what it is you have, uh, you can connect different things. So I've got a USB device connected where you can connect your iPhone. You can play Spotify off this as well. So if you've got Spotify on your phone, you can either play it through the Bluetooth or you can play it as it's connected through, through in the box here. Um, you also have things like when you go to your phone, Hey, hey, it's Steph AB. You can do obviously phone calling. You've got the uh, ability to do speech dial here. So you can do it all hands free, which is obviously important nowadays in this day and age. Um, but you also get other bits and bobs. So if you look at the vehicle, so you've got different settings. So you can set everything, you know, local illuminator. So this is the, uh, I think when you turn the car on, how long it stays, kind of like a follow me home feature. You've got interior lighting. So how long the lighting stays in exterior lighting you've got ambient lighting which is cool uh, so you have the option of just changing the changing it to whatever color you want uh, i've got it set to red based on the fact that the car is red um, ambient brightening lightness again pretty self-explanatory uh, interior welcome light so this effectively is where all of the leds kind of floating around kind of a bit like a disco uh, which i think is kind of cool i really like it dynamic select so this is where you can effectively set your individual setup so i talked about the eye setting over here so depending on what it is that you want to set from individual you can do that all here uh, so the way i've got it set at the moment is i have it set for the engine to be in sport plus the gearbox in manual and the traction control on uh, so it's just nice and easy so if i really want to kind of punch it uh, it just saves a bit of time so i can just go left to individual and i have full manual in sport plus so i get all the exhaust pops etc and it just works now what else have we got You've got the owner's manual, you can set the time. Now there's different versions of this. So you've got, as I talked about, you have command, which you can do stuff online. Uh, you can connect all to the internet. And when I connect my phone to this, I can actually get on some of the apps, uh, but it's very weird and very confusing. Uh, the sat nav on the Audio 20, so the Garmin Pilot, if you like, uh, is pretty good. I think when you buy the car new, you get the uh, three years worth of maps uh, throughout Europe, which is awesome. and. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just, I think it's cool for what it is. I'm still always a fan of Apple CarPlay though, so, uh, of Apple Google Maps, sorry. Uh, so if I have the option to use Google Maps, I definitely will. Then up in the roof, you've got, uh, in the roof, up on the top here, you've got usual stuff. So your book lights, you know, you've got your rear lights, dimming lights, etc. cetera. You've got the, so you've got the ability to, so you've got a, uh, kind of like a blind, which you can close um, as you normally do here. Uh, I like to keep that open. Uh, which is fantastic, obviously. But you've also got the ability to raise just the back here. So if I was to lift up up here, there you go, click up. You can see that that opens the sunroof there. And if you want to go further, I click all the way back and it'll open the sunroof completely open, uh, which is really, really good for if you do have that sun in the UK or wherever you are actually. So without boring you guys too much, I've got the spec sheet here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go through the additional optional extras that this car has, um, because there are so many. That's one of the things I find with these cars is that, you know, you think you've got something, but you don't, it's an additional optional extra. So it is, there's so much in here. So I'll kind of run through the, the stuff that this car does have. So the main one obviously being, it's, it's got the premium package, which is an additional 1500 quid. Um, it's also got the performance exhaust, AMG performance exhaust, you can see that's a 425 pound optional extra. Uh, the AMG night package, 1,329. Um, one of the things that uh, I was expecting the night package to have would be, would be the uh, the black grill, but it doesn't have it, uh, which is a bit of a shame. It's got the mirror package, live traffic information, all that fun stuff, um, illuminated seals, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the aerodynamics package, so this is obviously the canards, the spoiler, etc. Anyway. So what we'll do now is I'm going to, now that the car's warmed up, I'll give it a few revs so you can have a listen. Um, I'll put it in Sport Plus straight away so you can have a listen to what it sounds like. It does sound mega, so uh, yeah, let me go and position the camera for you right now so you can have a quick listen. sounds 
so sick. Under the bonnet, you can see that there's, well, first of all, you can see this huge turbo heat shield and a absolutely ridiculous downpipe. I mean, that is, as far as downpipes go, that is massive. Um, you can see that the uh, the engine bay itself is very smart, as you would expect from all of the German German engineered cars. But but this particularly for me looks really really nice. But more importantly, what's it? What's you know what's the facts and figures about? Well, two litre turbocharged, the, the most powerful two litre turbocharged four cylinder in the world, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, so, Michael Fest, congratulations, buddy, for building me this car. Very nice. Um, but yeah, I mean four wheel drive, of course. It will do zero to 16, 4.2 seconds, which is absolutely bonkers for a car, which effectively is a sporty hatch, uh, five door hatch. It's just absolutely mind blowing. So there it is, guys. That is my interior and exterior overview of the Mercedes AMG A45. Sorry, Mercedes A45 AMG. I love this car so much. It's, it's giving me everything I want from a performance hatch rack at the moment. Boot space, everything. It looks amazing. I just, I just can't. I can't really praise this thing enough at the moment if I'm honest with you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Make sure to check out some of the other videos, the first drive in that car, also the reveal video. Make sure you check that one out and I'm going to see you all very soon on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.